Ananda attaches to causes and conditions, Volume Four, Chapter Three, Sutra. Ananda, then bound at the Buddha's feet, arose in the great assembly and said to the Buddha, "The world on it one now explains that when the three conditions of karma, of killing, stealing, and lust are cut off, the three causes for them do not arise. Then the madness of Ananda in the mind." Ceases of itself, and just that ceasing is body. It is not something obtained from anyone else. This clearly are causes and conditions. Why then does the first command abruptly re- reject causes and conditions? Commentary: Ananda then bowed at the Buddha's feet. He prostrated himself and grasped the Buddha's feet. Then arose in the great assembly and said to the Buddha, "The world on it one now explains that when the three conditions of the karma of killing, stealing, and lust are cut off, the Buddha has discussed how the greed of killing, the greed of stealing, and the greed of lust, these three kinds of karma bring about the continuity of the world, the continuity of living beings, and." The continuity of karmic retribution. When these three conditions are cut off, the three causes for them do not arise. Then the madness of Yanadatta in the mind, that confusion in the mind, ceases of itself, and just that ceasing is body. It is not something obtained from anyone else. It does not come from somewhere outside. That's what the Buddha said. These clearly are causes and conditions. This principle is quite obviously the drama of causes and conditions. Why then does the first command abruptly reject causes and conditions? Why does the world on it one reject causes and conditions, spontaneity and mixing and uniting? What you are talking about right now is the drama of causes and conditions. Sutra. It was through causes and conditions that my mind became enlightened, world on it one, and that is not only true of us who are young in the in years of us sound hearers who still have to study, Maha Maudga Vyana, Shariputra, and Subhuti, who are now in this assembly and who followed the elder Brahmans, became enlightened. And obtained the state of nala flows upon hearing the Buddha expound upon causes and conditions. Commentary, Ananda said, it was through the principle of causes and conditions that my mind became enlightened, world on a one, and that is not only true of us, who are young in years, of us bhikshus, of us sound hearers. We still have to study the level of fourth stage ahadship. It's called the position of having nothing left to study. Those at the level of the first, second, and third portions still have to study. Sound hearers are the ahas who awaken to the way upon hearing the Buddha speak Dharma. Mahama Udga Diyana of the Big Bean Clan, Shariputra, son of the Egg Great. And the Saputi born in the emptiness, who are now in this assembly, and who followed the elder Brahmans, the Brahmans who espoused the theory of spontaneity, became enlightened, and obtained the state of no flows upon hearing the Buddha espoused upon causes and conditions. They heard the doctrine of the twelve links of conditioned causation as expressed by the Buddha, and became enlightened. They became our hearts with no outflows. They had no more ignorance, and so all their outflows were ended. They had gone what had to be done, and would undergo no further becoming. When all their outflows were ended, they became fourth stage our hearts. They obtained the penetration of the extinction of outflows. They had done what had to be done, and would not have to undergo further rebirth. Sutra. Now you say that body does not come from causes and conditions, so the spontaneity that Maskari 
Ghoshaliputra and others advocated in Raja Riha then becomes the primary meaning. I only hope you will let form great compassion and break through my confusion. Commentary won't honor the ones you previously spoke, the drama of causes and conditions, and the ahas opened enlightenment and were certified as having attained the fruition. Now you say that body does not come from causes and conditions. Now you've done away with causes and conditions. The spontaneity that Maskari, Roshaliputra, and others advocated in Raja Riha then becomes the primary meaning. Maskari Goshaliputra was still a leader of an externalist path that propelled spontaneity. His name means one who has not seen the way, Bu Chen Tao. By using causes and conditions, the Buddha destroyed the theory of spontaneity. Now that the Buddha has renounced causes and conditions, Ananda says, spontaneity must reign supreme. I only hope you will let form great compassion and break through my confusion. Buddha, I hope that with my, your mind of great com kindness and compassion, you will bring us out of our confusion. Instruct those of us who don't recognize true principle, those of us with too much false thinking. Sutra, the Buddha said to Ananda, let us take the case of Yanadatta in the city. If the causes and conditions of his madness cease, the nature that is not mad will spontaneously come forth. The entire principle of spontaneity and causes and conditions is nothing more than that. Commentary, the Buddha said to Ananda, let us take the case of Yanadatta in the city. If the causes and conditions of his madness cease, can you explain the causes and conditions of his madness? If his madness ceases, the nature that is not mad will spontaneously come forth. The entire principle of spontaneity and causes and conditions is nothing more than that. Tell me what aspect of his situation arose from causes and conditions and what aspect of it was spontaneous. That's all there is to say about these two principles. It's just a matter of what I have explained here. Sutra Ananda Yanadatta's head was spontaneously there. It was a spontaneous part of him. There was never a time when it was not. Why then did he suddenly fear that he had no head and start running about madly? Commentary Ananda, do you realize that Yanadatta's head was spontaneously there. He never lost it, and he never got it back. It was a spontaneous part of him. That's just the way he was. He had a head. There was never a time when he was not. It wasn't that originally he didn't have a head. Why then did he suddenly fear that he had no head and start running about madly? His head was there. It was never lost. You tell me then why he got scared and said that he was afraid he didn't have a head. He frightened himself into losing his head and started running around like a madman. What were the causes and conditions there? Where was the spontaneity? Sutra, if he naturally had a head and went mad due to, the, due to causes and conditions, would it not be just as natural for him to lose his head due to causes and conditions? Commentary Why didn't he really lose his head? Sutra Basically, his head was not lost. The madness and fear arose from falseness. There was never a change that took place. Why then labor the point about causes and conditions? Commentary Basically, his head was not lost. The madness and fear arose from falseness. He picked up a mirror one morning and said that he could see the eyes and eyebrows of the head very clearly in the mirror, but fretted that he could not see his own eyes and face. 
madness and fear arose, and he went running crazily about. His madness and fear arose from from falseness. There was never a change that took place. Also, he went mad and began running about in fear that he had no head. There really hadn't been any change at all. So why then labor the point about causes and conditions? What causes and conditions are you going to make out of this? What spontaneity was involved? Sutra, if the madness was spontaneous, the madness and fear would be fundamental. Before he went mad, then where was his madness hidden? Commentary, if the madness was spontaneous, if you want to argue the point and say that in fact his madness arose spontaneously of itself, the madness and fear would be fundamental. The madness and fear would have been there all the time. Before he went mad, then where was his madness hidden? Show me the place that the madness was hidden. Was hiding. You can't find it. So try. If the madness was not spontaneous, his head was in fact not lost. Why did he run about in a state of madness? Commentary. If the madness was not spontaneous, were we to say this, his natural state was not mad and his head was in fact not lost. There was nothing false about his head. It was not a phony head in the first place. Why did he run about in a state of madness? Why did he go mad and run about? Sutra, if you realize that you have a head and recognize the madness of your pursuit, then both spontaneity and causes and conditions become idle theories. That is why I say that the three conditions ceasing to be is itself the body mind. Commentary, Ananda, if you realize that you have a head, if you understand clearly about your own head and recognize the madness of your pursuit, you see that it is you who are running madly about. When you know that you have not lost your head and realize that there is no reason for you to be running crazily about, then both spontaneity and causes and conditions become ego theories. Talk about causes and conditions, and spontaneity just becomes a joke. That is why I say that the three conditions ceasing to be is itself the Buddha mind. When there is no more greed of killing, greed of stealing, or greed of lust in you, when you have cut off these three causes and conditions, you have attained the Buddha mind. Sutra, the Buddha mind being produced. And the mind subject to production and extinctions being extinguished is simply production and extinction. Commentary We refer to the body mind as being produced and the mind of production and extinction as being extinguished, but in reality, they have no actual substance or nature. Sutra The ending of both production and extinction is the effortless way. If there is spontaneity, then clearly it must be that the thought of spontaneity arises and the mind subject to production and extinction ceases. That then is still production and extinction. Commentary The ending of both production and extinction is the effortless way. It is the great Shuragama Samadhi. If there is spontaneity, then clearly it must be that the thought of spontaneity arises. You should understand that if there is spontaneity, then the thought of spontaneity arises, and the mind subject to production and extinction ceases. You should realize that that then is still production and extinction. If you, your understanding is that the mind subject to production and extinction is extinguished, then you are proposing Proposing a case of production and extinction, not a case of spontaneity. Sutra. To call the like of production and extinction spontaneity is the same as to say that the single substance formed by the combination of all mundane appearances is a mixed and united essence. 
and that whatever is not mixed and united is basically spontaneous in nature. Commentary: The call to call the lack of production and extinction spontaneity is the same as to say that the single substance formed by the combination of all mundane appearances is a mixed and united essence, saying that spontaneity is the opposite of production and extinction is just like saying that spontaneity is the opposite of a lot of appearances in the world coming together and forming a mixed and united substance. It is like saying that the lack of mixing and uniting is spontaneity. Spontaneity in those terms is still in the realm of duality. Sutra, when spontaneity is devoid of spontaneity, and mixing and uniting are devoid of their unifying quality, so that spontaneity and unite and unity alike are abandoned, and both the abandonment abandonment of them and their existence is to be that is no either theory. Commentary when spontaneity is devoid of spontaneity and mixing and uniting are devoid of their unifying quality. The phrase mixing and uniting refers to causes and conditions. When spontaneity isn't spontaneity and mixing and uniting don't have the causes and conditions of mixing and uniting. So that spontaneity and unity alike are abandoned, the two doctrines of spontaneity and of the uniting aspect of causes and conditions are each abandoned, and both the abandonment of them and their existence cease to be. When one separates from causes and conditions and spontaneity, both are gone. There is no spontaneity and no causes and conditions. Both dramas are abandoned. That is no ego theory. There aren't any causes and conditions, and there isn't any spontaneity. Such an explanation as that is no ego theory. It's not just talking in riddles. Sutra, Bodhi, and Nirvana are still so far away that you must undoubtedly pass through compass of bitterness and delusions before you cultivate them and are certified. Commentary, Bodhi and Nirvana, those fusions, are still so far away that you must undoubtedly pass through compass of bitterness and delusions before you cultivate them and are certified. If we look at where we are now, Ananda, Bodhi and Nirvana are very far away indeed. You will certainly have to pass through very many compass, enduring a lot of suffering and toiling and great lengths before you can finish cultivating and reach certification and attainment to Bodhi and Nirvana. Sutra, you can hold in memory in 12 divisions of the sutras spoken by the Buddhas of the 10 directions and their pure wonderful principles as many as the sense of the river Ganges, but it only is your ego theorizing. Commentary, you can hold in memory, you can remember it very clearly and never leave anything out. The 12 divisions of the sutras spoken by the Buddhas of the 10 directions. I explained the 12 divisions of the canon at the beginning of this sutra. I wonder if anyone still remembers them. And there are pure wonderful principles, as many as the sands in the river Ganges. In the twelve divisions of the canon, the doctrines are pure and inconceivable and as numerous as the sands of the Ganges, but it only is your ego theorizing. Although you can remember so many sutras, it does nothing but help you concoct ego theories. It's not real. Sutra, you can discuss causes and conditions and spontaneity and understand them perfectly clearly and people in the world refer to you as the one foremost in learning. You have spent errands upon ends saturating yourself with learning yet you could not avoid the difficulty of Mataji. Commentary, I will list the 12 divisions of the canon again for you. Pros, repetitive verses, 
bestowal of predictions, interjected passages, analogies, former events, present lives, universalities, previously non-existent dharma, unrequested dharma, and connected dharma, and discussions. When I listed them, I didn't look at any notes or refer to any commentary. I remembered them in the same way. Those of you who are following this explanation of the sutra should remember what you read. When you study, you should aim at remembering it. It's a lot of bother when you don't remember clearly what you've studied so that you have to look things up before you can explain them. You should work to remember the essential parts of the sutra. You can discuss causes and conditions and spontaneity and understand them perfectly clearly. You can remember the principles very clearly and explain them precisely. And people in the world refer to you as the one foremost in learning. You have spent ends upon ends saturating yourself with learning. You've developed your intelligence and memory power. Oh, now I get it. Now I know why none of you remember the things I, I explained. I figured it out when I read this passage of text in the sutra. It never occurred to me before. You've seen that Ananda was able to remember so many sutras, but that it didn't do him any good. So you have decided not to commit a single sentence to memory. You don't want to be like Ananda, who depended on erudition and neglected somebody. That's probably it, isn't it? He became infused with study and learning like the incense saturates the air here in the home. In fact, those of you who come to hear the sutras every day may not remember what you've heard, but just think how helpful it is in reading yourself of bad habits and phones. At the very least, when you're studying the sutras, you won't be smoking cigarettes or doing other things that are bad for you. Every day that you study, you get better. Some people say that when they study, they advance a little and then retreat a little. But in the final analysis, retreating from having studied is a lot better than having studied than not having studied at all. If you never take a single step forward, how could we even speak of retreat? Yet you could not avoid the difficulty of Mantaji. Although you remember so many things, you still couldn't keep out of trouble with Mantaji. In other words, as soon as you see a woman, you get confused. Tell me what ills are you? No matter how many books you've read, no matter how much Buddha drama you remember, what use is it all if you forget everything as soon as you see a woman? Why are you like that? The Buddha asks Ananda. Ananda, no doubt, was red in the face at this point. Although he had been certified to the first version of Ahadship, he must have blushed when Shakyamuni Buddha asked him that question. Sutra why did you have to wait for me to use the spiritual mantra of the Buddha Samit? The fire blast in Mantaji's daughter's heart died instantly and she attained the position of an anagamin. Now she is one of a vigorous group in Majama Assembly. The river of love dried up in her and she was able to set you free. Commentary The Buddha said, You've studied so much Buddha Dharma, but you go berserk as soon as you see a woman. You lost your head and you followed that woman right into her house. And once you got in there, you were on the verge of doing some unmentionable things. What were you up to anyway? At this point, the Buddha was like a judge cross-examining Ananda. Why did you have to wait for me to use the spiritual mantra of the Buddha Samit and tell Manju Sri Bodhisattva to go save you? You yourself remember so much of the twelve divisions of the canon. Why didn't you recite them for her? 
Why did you lose control? You see a woman and forget everything. The way you look at it, the only thing that exists in the whole world is women. The fire blast in Mantaji's daughter's heart died instantly. Her sexual desire, her ignorance instantly died. And she attained the position of an anagamin, the third portion of Ahashi. Mantaji's daughter had loved Ananda. He became more important to her than her own life. She went home and told her mother that she absolutely had to trap Ananda. Her mother recited the former Brahma heaven mantra and Ananda became confused. Actually, we say the mantra confused him, but basically the devil cannot overcome the proper. If Ananda had had the least bit of interest in Mantaji's daughter, then the recitation of the mantra would have had no effect. It's certain that Mantaji's daughter caught Ananda's eye. He stole several glances at her. What a pretty girl. That meant not to look again. He turned his head away but gave in again and took another look. After looking her over a few times in this way, the thought of the beauty of Mantaji's daughter had planted itself in his mind. So when her mother recited the mantra, Ananda followed her in a daze. If this hadn't been the case, he never would have gone along. The Buddha realized that Ananda was on the verge of destroying the precept substance, and so he immediately spoke the Suragama mantra. He commanded Manjushri Bodhisattva to take the mantra and go provide it and go provide protection for so that Ananda could be saved. When he got there and recited the Suragama mantra, Ananda's mind cleared. How did I get here? He wondered, and he headed directly back to the Jetta Grove in the garden of the benefactor of orphans and solitary. He had been right at the point of intercourse with Mantaji's daughter and when Manjushri Bodhisattva arrived with the Suragama Mantra. Ananda no doubt jumped up, threw on his clothes and ran out. When Mantaji's daughter realized he was leaving, he pursued him. She pursued him. Why are you leaving at the most important moment? She cried. So Ananda ran back to the Jetta Grove with Mantaji's daughter tracing along behind. When she arrived, the Buddha asked her, What are you doing here? I love Ananda, she replied. Why do you love about what do you love about Ananda? The Buddha asked. She said, I love Ananda's nose. We'll cut off his nose and give it to you, was the Buddha's immediate reply. I love Ananda's eyes, he continued. We'll gouge them out and you can have them, the Buddha interrupted. I love Ananda's whole face. He summed up. That's easy, said the Buddha. We'll just slice it off and you can take it back with you. If you slice it off, it won't be attractive, she protested. If it wouldn't be attractive then, what do you find so attractive about it now when it's still intact? And in the moment, she took it to think that over. She suddenly became enlightened and was certified to the third version of Ahashi. Because her love for Ananda was so extreme, she instantaneously accomplished, accomplished to the fruition when the Buddha spoke the, that Dharma for her. Now she is one of a vigorous group in my Dharma assembly. The word translated as group here is literally forest in the Chinese text. It represents a gathering of people who are courageously vigorous. Let me say to all of you now that you don't have to fear sexual attraction between men and women. All you have to do is wake up to it and realize what it's really all about. Then there will be some hope for you. It's just to be feared that you won't wake up, but will be totally confused and keep going back to it thinking it is a source of happiness. In actuality, it is really agonizing. If you really understood, 
You'd never do it again, but you don't. So think about it when you are awake, and dream about it when you are asleep, and can't leave it alone. The river of love dried up in her. Love is like a torrential river, which flows unceasingly, swirling around you on all sides. But when Madhusudan's, ah,、uh, when Mantaji's daughter heard the Buddha speak Dharma, for her the river of love disappeared. The fire of love and desire was transformed into an indestructible body of Vara, and she was able to set you free, because Mantaji's daughter was certified to the third version of Ahashi. She didn't try to hold on to you, and so now you've been set free. At this point, Ananda was still. A first stage ahead, hadn't even obtained the second fruition, but Mandaji's daughter went right past him and was certified to the third fruition. In five hundred former lives, Ananda and Mandaji's daughter had been married to each other. So when she saw Ananda, it was love at first sight. She had met her husband from former lives. Her love for him was unavoidable. In fact, they probably had vows from former lives. Last life, she had probably said to Ananda, "In the future, let's always get married to each other. Let us never part." That's why the love between them was so strong that they fell in love as soon as they laid eyes on each other.